Hi and welcome. I'm Uli Bear, the creator and host of Think About It, the podcast you're listening to or watching. Thanks for being here. I'm a writer, a translator. I also teach at New York University in New York City. I teach literature and photography, two very different subjects, and a range of other classes. And I want to say something about the way I choose the books that are featured on this section of the podcast on the great books. The books I choose are all books that introduce a new voice or a new way of telling one story into the world. Why do I pick Zora Neale Hurston's The Eyes Were Watching God in a conversation with Deborah Plant? Why Chinu Achebe's novel Things Fall Apart with Mantia Diawara? Why Virginia Woolf to the Lighthouse? Why Phyllis Wheatley's poetry? Why Franz Kafka's short stories? The reason I pick these books is because they create a new space in the world for someone to speak about themselves on their own terms. I'm interested in literature, in works that open up the paradigms in which we make sense of the world, that create something new and different, and actually allow others to speak as well. This doesn't mean that they are the first to ever have said anything from the space they now claim. It's not that Zora Neale Hurston is the first African-American woman to ever speak. There have been millions before her, of course. But with her novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God, she introduces and creates a space into the world for others to join their voices. I've really benefited from people who have understood literature in this way as not just adding a seat to the table, but creating a space open for others to join their voices, to express themselves, and this is really critically important to me, to express themselves on their own terms. What does it mean to speak on your own terms? On terms that are mine, that I define for myself as a writer, but then become universal, become accepted by others who then can use these terms, transform them and say something new. So my criterion for inclusion is really writers that change the paradigm in which we have made sense of the world by adding new voices, new experiences that have then become mainstream. My understanding of literature has of course been shaped through conversations and my own studies with great teachers, Shoshana Fellman, Kathy Carruth, Jeffrey Hartman, who were my advisors in graduate school, and who all insisted on the force of literature to claim a new space for humans to make sense of the world in which we live. I've also really benefited from reading the French philosopher Simone Weil, who thought that there's a human dignity in expressing oneself. She actually attended a performance of Shakespeare where she thought that even Shakespeare didn't quite recognize the power contained in his work to give voice to those people who she said had suffered the greatest humiliation that people could experience in history, which is to be denied their voice, their dignity of free expression. So Simone Weil makes this direct link between freedom of expression and literature that I found really useful to the way in which I choose my books in this podcast. I also thought about Albert Camus the Nobel Prize winner and French novelist who said in his Nobel Prize acceptance speech, the obligation of a writer is to speak on behalf of those subjected to history, not those who make history. That means the writer has to give a space for others to join into a conversation. So what I'm interested in in books is books that create a new space for others to join into conversations that had been established in many ways to exclude them. Clarice Lispector, a Brazilian writer in The Hour of the Star, writes about a woman who really doesn't have the means of expressing herself, and she finds a way to give voice to an experience that hadn't been there before. Oscar Wilde, in the picture of Dorian Gray, writes about, in the famous words of his lover, Lord Alfred Douglas, a love that dare not speak its name, to talk about a kind of love that society didn't sanction. And the book created a space for others to speak, so my understanding of greatness is literature, books, poems, plays, novels that shift the entire paradigm of what now counts in the mainstream. It's very difficult to talk about the mainstream because other people have always written from other places, have always published, always spoken. T.S. Eliot said that every great work of art reshifts the entire canon that precedes it. Harold Bloom, who was one of my teachers, the late Harold Bloom, had a different definition of greatness. He said it's cognitive originality, the way Emily Dickinson's poems understand the world in ways that we have not thought about. 
aesthetic splendor, the beauty of sentences constructed that use language that everyone uses and create something new, and wisdom, by which Harold Bloom understood our way of making sense and making peace with our human limitations of living in the world. But I'm interested in something a little bit different, that these books open up the space for others to speak. They create the freedom of expression. They insist on it. They claim a new space for others to join into conversations. They don't shut them out. So I disagree a bit with Oscar Wilde, who said there are no bad books. There are only books that are badly written. There can be books that shut others out. I'm not as interested in those books. I'm interested in books that open up a conversation, start a new conversation, and invite others in. That's also the point of the podcast, why I have it as conversations with people. I think a lot about who to invite as a guest. I research people who've written interesting things, said interesting things. And the point of it is to have a conversation where I learn always. I learn always new things. I prepare by reading the author's book, reading as much about the authors that I can find, and reading also all of my guests' work to the extent possible. Some of them have published so many books, it's a bit hard. But when I talk to Ismail Mohammed about gene tumors came, a brilliant conversation, really. When I talk to Kate Stimson about Simone de Beauvoir, where she explains the significance of the second sex for generations of scholars. When I talk to Carol Gilligan about Nathaniel Hawthorne or Caroline Weber about Albert Camus or Marcel Proust, with Ava Chin about Maxine Hong Kingston's Woman Warrior, I always try to engage in a conversation that is directed by my guest which means that I try to follow what this book did for them, how it opened up a new way of thinking for them. So my hope and intention with the podcast is that it also generates new conversations for you, the listeners, that you will either contact me on Lyceum or any of the other platforms, but that you also find these books to open up a space for you to express yourself on your own terms in ways that are meaningful and, as I said, that creates a space for others to join in a conversation. This is really my intention, to open up a conversation that connects people, doesn't divide them, opens up a space for others to speak, and creates new modes of recognition and speaking for people who have not had the kind of access before. Thank you for watching and for listening to my podcast, Think About It. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like it, do the same thing on iTunes and Spotify, like it. It allows other listeners to find the podcast more easily. And again, I really appreciate you being here. Put some comments below. Let me know what books you'd like to see, what I should talk about and think about. I read a lot, but people sometimes recommend books I've never heard of. So I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being here on this journey with me.